So the question is, what happens when somebody is shopping in Amazon or eBay and the server goes down or the server shuts down? That is what we are going to be talking about today. We are going to be talking about pullback or circuit breaker using pain client and histories. And let me demonstrate it right now. So this is our demo Amazon. We have this application I built using AngularJS. Now it's connected to two different servers. We have a server in US, which is a primary server which is serving this application right now. The data is coming from a data center in the United States. And you can see I've included the location column right here. And there is a little illustration I have here. Uh, we are going to be coming to this uh, to explain the architecture completely after now. But for now, let me just demonstrate it so that you can see that nothing really happens, that the user doesn't really notice anything. The server simply, uh, the application simply routes back the traffic to another place completely, in this case to India. And let's see how it goes. So at this point, let me just shift the, uh, the console at this point so that you can see what is happening. So let me open this place. Okay, perfect. So this is the production server, the primary server right here running right here is a Spring application. All these are Spring applications except this UI application I built using AngularJS. I'm going to show you how to do all of this uh, after now. But for now, it's very important to understand exactly how it works because it's only when you understand exactly how it works, you'll be able to do it or appreciate how it is done. All the codes, everything I have already uh, uh, built it and they are right there for you. I'm going to show you. So right now, this application is running uh, products are in the US data center. And for some reason, the US data center gets bombed and it shuts down completely. And that's what I'm going to simulate now. So I'm going to go to the server. So there is a product server here. I'm going to simply uh, right click and say stop the production server. I'm going to stop this production server in the US at this point. Um, so I've stopped it right now. Now, and if the user is still on the website, maybe he continues to shop. Uh, maybe he goes to try to click on order now, or maybe he tries to click on maybe the uh, checkout or something. You find out that if you take look, if you take a look at this place, what do you see? You can see delegating to the Indian server and take note of the location now. The location have changed to India. All this happened without even the user noticing what happened. This is achieved using Spring Boots and additional tools called Paint Client and the Hystrix Circuit Breaker. And this is what we are going to be talking about. Before I go into the actual demo, let me show you the architecture so that you understand the plumbing involved in, co in this configuration. So let's, let me get to the website. So this is a website uh, where I did the explanation. This website, I built it specifically uh, to talk about microservices using Spring Boot and additional tools on sp using Spring Boot. So now you see that we have microservices, how to configure fallback with history, circuit breaker, and thing fine. So basically, this is what we are talking about. This is a UI application built in Angular, and we have the, the, the two servers right there. One fails and it's routed back to the other one. But there is a bigger architecture right here. And this is what I just demonstrated. If you look at this architecture, it has about five different sections, okay? We have the Angular UI application. This is just a UI application that serves up HTML pages. This UI application connects with this web application right here, okay? So many of the work is done by this web application. And this web application now connects to two different servers, okay? So the data hosting, the server, the servers hosting the data, they are in different locations. It could be India, China, USA, different countries. There are many servers, but in this case, I've actually indicated only two different servers. Now, the negotiation between these two servers and the web application is done in some middle tier system, which is actually where the work is done. This middle tier system is called Pain Client Plus Strix fallback uh, system or configuration. So there are three items inside this fallback component. And one of them is the, the actual, uh, the product service proxy, the product alternate service proxy, 
these are two about the same thing they are two clients where you can proxy into so the product product service proxy connects to the first server that the primary server the product alternate service proxy connects to the the the, the server two the product server two which is this one you see right here so let's take a normal flow when a user comes here and goes to the angular js app and makes a request for product or something he wants to check out it gets to the product web right here this application right here and it flows into get to the faint client to this let's say it gets to this place it routes through the product service proxy and gets into the product server okay it doesn't get into the alternate service proxy uh, pro uh, product alternate service uh, service component or product alternate service uh, uh, service product alternate se uh, service proxy anything that is called alternate only comes into play when there is a problem when there is a failure that is when this alternate components will come into play so now if the user tries to access the product server for some reason the product server is busy and it's always down it's going to fall back and that's why it's called hysterics fall back it's going to fall back to the product alternate service proxy component and this component is now going to route the request through the alternate service proxy into the second server now let me show you something so assuming that you can see the indian server is it's being is working now so you have location is india what happens when the primary server comes back online what happens is that this primary server will take over it's going to take over from the this alternate server and continue because the primary server is actually the main server where the application gets its data from the alternate server is meant to run for a while so once it means the primary server is down is going to be fixed and then the traffic goes back to it immediately without the user or the shopper noticing it. Let me just show you how it works again. I'm going to start up this primary server in the US and let's see what happens in the UI application. So I'm going to come back here, the product server, and I'm going to start it up again by clicking on this run button right here. Once it starts up right now, you can you will see that if the user continues shopping then it automatically or con if the user continues to interact with the page it automatically will uh, switch over to the primary server because right now the indian server is what is running so let's see so now i'm starting up this server and let's see so i seems it started on for it's still coming up all right tomcat started on port 8080 as you can see so if I go back to this page and the user is still interacting with the page and you can see that location changes back to the US immediately uh, it doesn't delegate delegate is when or the alternate server comes into play if I shut down this server again and the user continues to interact with the page is interacting with the page notice that it delegates to the Indian server again and the location changes to the India okay now what is involved now let me show you uh, what is involved now this architecture here this web page I'm using to explain microservices this web page right here you can find the link in the description box it's a new website I built simply to teach concepts of microservices and how to implement them using strictly Spring Boot and Angular JS and additional tools that are related to these things so if you want to support me on this website because this is a brand new website I just bought this domain and built this website I'm not putting out bats on it for now so you can actually buy me a coffee so you have a link in this in the website somewhere you have a link buy me a coffee you can buy me a coffee or support me in other ways maybe subscribe to my channel support me on patreon because this is what i do if you have some topic you want me to play clarify to you please don't fail to let me know as well in the, in the comment below this video so let me just show you a bit of the code and then uh, I'm going to now make the comprehensive lesson where I'm going to be uh, spending time bit by bit. We are, going, we are going to develop this system, all these application or services, and configure it. Now, it's, 
it takes much effort for me to break it down. So you can see there, there are about um, four different sections. So I'm going to show you first. Uh, and I have the faint client and the another another faint client, right? So let me kind of uh, open this window side by side. So let's put this side by side so that you can see a bit of the code while we talk it over. Uh, I think I can reduce this. Okay, perfect. All right, so this is what we have at this point. So we have the, the Angular app. That one is not the, the main thing because that is built in Angular. The, how to build this application is very easy. Check the description box. You check my website as well. I can actually help you. So if you look at the, the pain client has two proxies, right? So two proxies. The one is the primary proxy. In the primary proxy, you must configure a fallback, okay? In the primary proxy, you must configure a fallback. So this proxy is simply uh, the, the, the service that the product web microservice delegates the routing through, okay? It delegates it through this, this proxy, which is a thin client. For all this proxy, they are thin clients. And now the thin client for the primary proxy is actually having the name, the product proxy, the URL, URL at port 8080, and at port 8080 you can see is going to this place. And it also specifies a fallback component, as you can see right here, a fallback component. And this fallback component is alternate server proxy, uh, alternate server proxy component is specified. So this alternate server proxy component is what is responsible for now routing the service through the second pain client that goes to uh, uh, localhost at port 8089, which is the server 2. I hope you understand a bit of how this works. Not a comprehensive explanation because after now, I'm going to be making a complete video on how this works step by step. Uh, it's a bit challenging to understand, but I'm trying to figure out a way to break it down with a so regardless if you're a beginner or intermediate or you are an expert, you can actually follow this. The reason is because as a software engineer or as a developer, the key thing should be that your application is up and running 247, 365 days a week. And that makes you have a good SLA and the customers will be very, very happy. So these are the pieces of code. Now, if you want to assess all these applications, I already built them They're in my repository. And I think if you look at my website, uh, if you look at my website, you can find the link to all of them at this point. You can find the three links to them at this point. I think I added one more. So uh, you can actually fork them from the Git, my GitHub and use them. But I recommend you follow me in this channel so that we can do it step by step because in that way you will, you'll be able to understand all the plumbings and all the uh, bits of code that are put together, the dependencies, how it is built up from bottom up. And this is the best way to learn because it took me some time to be able to figure it out and be able to break it down for you. So I'm going to stop here for now. Let me now prepare the step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do this, uh, including how to build this Angular UI application I have right here. And we are going to do this from beginning to end and how we can hook up hook up all these microservices and make it run this way. So I'm going to be stopping here. If you've not subscribed, please subscribe. Let you, let me also know that this benefited you. And I remain kind on the tech pro and we'll see you in the next part.